Welcome to this week in Missouri Politics from the state capitol in Jeff City, the first day of session. And we are joined by the guy who's kind of the ringmaster of it all, the House Majority Floor Leader, Dean Plogger from St. Louis. Welcome back to the show. Scott, I appreciate you having me on. It's a, a new day for, here, for us here. It just feels like the first day is almost shot out of a cannon. You know, everybody's pre-filed and read excited and you got the speeches in. One thing I, I really thought was class, you had a, you had a moment of silence for Tom Hannigan. Absolutely. Tell folks about your relationship with Tom Hannigan. You know, Tom was just an all around nice guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody that knew Tom that didn't like him. Um, a friend to everybody, advocated strongly for uh, positions we didn't always agree on, but, sure. but respected his opinion and he carried a great deal of respect in the caucus. And uh, it was sad to, when, when he passed in October and uh, I, I, you know, we at least owe him a moment of silence and yeah. serve his memory of how he served the people of Missouri. It was deserved. Let's talk about some things that are buzzed around the Capitol. Number one, congressional maps. It looks to me like I heard some senators talk about it, Senator Eagles made a pitch. You, the leadership came out with essentially a 6-2 map. Some yes. folks have criticized the district you're in as not being Republican enough. Um, you know that area better than I do, better than most folks. It does feel like Ann Wagner could win that district five times. You know, the problem with drawing maps, redrawing districts every mm -hmm. year, you got you know, we got to etch out eight congressional districts. We didn't lose a seat like we did the last time. No one gets exactly what they want. So we have to figure out how we, we construct maps that make the most sense for Missourians. The map that was filed, I don't know if that's gonna be exactly the map that passes, but we're gonna have you know, amendments drop to, to change and look at it sure. differently. I don't know what those are gonna look like. I haven't seen any amendments yet. To me, but, philosophically though, you go, there's folks that advocate for a 7-1 and folks that advocate for a 6-2. The 6-2, you are most assured of electing six Republicans for the next 10 years and two Democrats. Would like to think so, certainly. But if you do change that, I mean, yes, in 2022, my assumption is, looking at the political climate, you could probably elect seven Republicans pretty easily. However, you've been around politics for a while. People don't know this. You've been active in Republican politics for a long time. In 06 and 08, those are different years. And I'm not sure you could elect seven Republicans in the 06 and 08 years. It is interesting how politics evolve. I often say one year in politics is like four or five of a normal <laughs> yeah. life. And you don't know what's going to come. And you know, one minute it's not a topic or an issue, then it's the, the, the mm. issue that everyone has to focus on. Uh, my goal is just to do what's best for Missouri, to pass maps that make sense. Um, I, of course, want conservatives. I, I, I love an 8-0 map. Yeah. Um, I like a 18-0 map. In, in 1900, we had 18 yeah. congressional districts. And I think what we're down here for and what we need to do, and I know the eyes are on the maps because that's sure. our constitutional obligation but it should also be, what can we do to make Missouri better so we get back some districts, right? What do we do to grow Missouri? Eco economically, we have to, and we're gonna talk, and Tell this is gonna this. be a long It'll session. Be, everybody's gonna talk about these maps and the emergency clause, you're gonna have to be the one that actually gets the votes. Can you get a Democrat vote on an emergency clause? On a six to on a seven one map, I think that'd be tough, wouldn't it? I, I think it would be tough, but you never know. Again, things do change, but we we've lost members. We had two members it, leave. It'll uh, be funny. Everybody today. will talk about how easy this is, but it'll be you the one that's actually doing it. <laughs> it it's going to be challenging, but it's not just the house. I mean, the house we work together. I think even across party lines, uh, quite often. Uh, it's, it's often on the other side of the building that will be challenging as well, where they have a filibuster power. This bill, the redistricting bill, is treated like any other bill, so I, I presume they could filibuster over there as well. Let's talk about some other things going on. Uh, the abortion debate, you guys passed some landmark abortion legislation in the last couple of years. Now the Supreme Court's made a ruling. There's some folks talking about the Texas case. I assume we'll see some abortion language come to the floor out of the House. Well, I, I, it's been filed, yeah. right? So, I mean, my goal is to protect Missourians' you know, God-given constitutional rights. But how that bill percolates through the system and how it takes shape you know, is, is going to be for the body to participate in. And at some point, too, does that, how does the Senate work through that? So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's the exciting thing about first day of school, if you will. <laughs> um, what teachers did you get? What bills are you where, who, What's moving and what path? And, and that's where we're at today because right now we can do anything. It's the first day, and we have we have to work through a lot of money that's come, that's being put on the table by the federal government. Five billion dollars is coming in. The the governor wants to file a supplemental uh, budget with, that we need to to work through. We have redistricting, and we have a lot of economic things that I think we need to address so that when it comes to redistricting, maybe in ten years we can add a congressional seat. So another thing, there's been something I've seen you do that's a little different. You're from St. Louis, but you've stood up for rural Missouri. I don't even know how many times. Sometimes when rural Missourians don't even stick up for rural Missouri, you've stood up for them. And, and a big part of that's agriculture. The MASBA tax credits, you guys got them done last year. The, the Senate didn't get them done. 
that's something everyone's talked about. Representative Rohn's got his bill raring to go. Is that something that you, when you get that, how quick can you move that through the body? Well, it passed out last year. Yeah. Uh, I don't see why it won't pass out quickly this year. When it's put on the calendar, I'm, I'm game to have it debated. Depends on how quickly we can do that in conjunction with some of the other things we have to do. But my heart is with rural Missouri and the farmers. I, I have an idea. There's a lot of folks from St. Louis that, that frankly, they maybe look at some of the rest of the state as flyover country. You've had a heart for rural Missouri. Where does that come from? You know, I, I grew up in St. Louis County, been in St. Louis County my yeah. entire life, basically. But my, my uh, grandparents uh, lived in uh, Madison County, Illinois. I had a farm out there. Um, I went out there regularly. Uh, we had a Christmas tree farm my mom and dad started. So I know what it means to work outside and sweat, and I enjoy that. In fact, I still operate the family farm. It's not really a big farm, but it's now, some place to go to cut wood. It's in uh, Madison County, uh, just outside of Highway. Down beautiful and, Highway 67, right? <laughs> it's, it's a gorgeous place. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's, it's been in the family for a long time, and I'm proud of it. But, but awesome. I appreciate what rural Missouri does, and I think we need to, if you look at the census, again, as we redistrict here, rural Missouri lost population, and, and they're, they're facing yep. challenges every day. Hospitals are closing. Um, the roads are going to hopefully be improved on broadband. here. Broadband. Uh, broadband needs to get to them. How do you, how do you have remote learning or remote telemedicine if you don't have broadband you can't and so those are some needs i think we have to address and i hope to address those this cycle last question i've got you, in your home district they now have a mass score that the county council passed you guys passed a really i thought it was a pretty good piece usually when you're in a crisis you get an extreme piece of legislation jim murphy one of your colleagues i thought he'd come up with an idea of you have you can issue an order but you got to get the legislative body to approve it for a long time, the county council wouldn't. Last night they did. I'm sure it's going to be controversial. But I, I thought that was an interesting, uh, interesting thing for your home county. I wonder how that's going to be received back home. Well, you know, I mean, I, this, this disease has been with us nearly two years. Yeah. And I'm sensitive to the disease. I think, you know, uh, a lot of people have died. And, and it's, your wife's it's, a nurse. I mean, my wife's a that. nurse. Uh, actually, uh, and, yeah. And it, it gets deeper. than My father-in-law actually has COVID right now. So um, now wearing a mask and, and when things percolate out as this disease did, um, you know, I'm, I was sensitive to the idea that we need to certainly protect everybody and, and the people, but I don't like autocratic rule. And I like the idea that Jim Murphy had, you know, hey, listen, we all talked about it. What can we do to pass laws that are beneficial for our, for our citizens? And going through the legislative process is important. Um, but I don't necessarily believe the government's role is to tell people what to do all the yeah. time in every aspect. You know, if you're a private business, you want to require a shirt and shoes to walk in, you want to require a mask. I don't have a problem with that for private businesses. But I often do question where government is, what government is doing to try to usurp our individual liberties by coming up with mandates. It'll be interesting to see. I, I assume you'll have a ton of legislation already filed that's going to change health departments and schools and things. Uh, but it does kind of come down to, to me, do you think you should make decisions or the government should collectively make them? What do you think? I mean, I think with a mask order in place in, in, a, in the largest county in the state probably brings this issue back to the front. And I'm sure someone's going to want to address the health departments again. Where do you, where do you come down on that? Well, I, you know, what I've learned and I'm continuing to learn yeah. is how health departments operate across the state. And they're often operating entirely different. There's not a lot of continuity. So there's not a, a great deal of expectation of what you can expect from your local health department or your local government or what businesses can expect. And I think there needs to be greater continuity of how health departments are managed and run so the citizens have a reasonable expectation of where things can go and that their civil liberties are being protected as well. Alice Majority of Dean Blunt, thank you for joining us. Hope you'll come back as session unfolds and talk about maybe maybe this will be a blooper video. We made these predictions early on and how it comes out. Well, let's hope we get some good things done this year. I'm confident that we're going to work hard. Uh, I know the body that I'm honored to serve in is, is ready to get to work, and uh, we hopefully pass some maps, and uh, we're accountable for how we're doing it. So thank, thank you, you for much. having us. We'll be right back. This is Missouri Pods. We have Mike Deering coming up. There's always the quotable Mike Deering. But first, go to showmissouri.com. This is Missouri, one county time. Go check out our episode that we did actually on Madison County in the Battle of Fredericktown. We'll be right back after this. All across Missouri, our new car and truck dealers are building strong local economies. When you buy a car or truck in Missouri, you're helping to support over 20,000 Missouri families who rely on the auto industry for good-paying local jobs. You're also helping fund our communities, schools, first responders, and our roads because dealers generate millions of dollars in tax revenue. Missouri's automobile dealers have been the foundation of our communities for generations. 
and for generations to come. The Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, the heart of Missouri. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right to work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. Your energy needs are changing. That's why at Ameren, Missouri, we're not waiting on the future. We're building it with the Smart Energy Plan, advancing thousands of projects across the state, helping reduce emissions through cleaner energy sources, boost reliability with self-healing equipment, and better withstand storms with new composite poles. Moving Missouri forward and bringing us all a little closer together. That's energy at work, Ameren, Missouri. Welcome back to Week in Missouri Politics. We are joined by three senators and one of the most quotable men in Missouri Capitol, starting with Stephen Roberts from St. Louis. Welcome to the show, sir. Glad to be here. Senator Barb Washington from Kansas City, welcome back. And actually, Saline County originally, right? My family's from Saline County, yes. but thank you for having me again. Senator Denny Hoskins from Warrensburg, thank you for making the time. Yes, thanks for having me. And the quotable Mike Deering. This rotunda has been filled with Mike Deering quotes for a very long time. Head of the Cattlemen Association, thanks for joining us. Thank you. We talked about session bills. We started, we had Dean Plocker on earlier. We talked about MASBA tax credits. That's something that people might not understand that don't follow as close. What are MASBA tax credits? So basically it is um, the, the MASBA the tax credits, the Missouri Agricultural Small Business Development Authority tax credits are uh, rural economic development tax credits to help uh, spur growth in our rural communities for farm and ranch families, for meat processing, for re renewable energy and on down the list. And so those, uh, those tax credits are set to sunset and this just um, keeps so them a little bit of pressure rolling. to make this happen, right? Certainly. Senator Hoskins, I'm just thankful you have some words left. What'd you do, two hours on the floor, two and a half today? I believe it was about two hours. Yeah. Break it down, give me like the house, no, instead of Cliff Notes, the house version of what you took to the floor today and what you, what you set out to accomplish. Well, what we wanted to accomplish and really talk about was honesty, integrity, and, and honor in the Senate. And it, as a senator, you are only as good as a person of your word. And we feel like we've had um, a lack of disrespect, a lack of, lack of honesty, a lack of truthfulness uh, by some of our Republican leadership when it's come to uh, deals that were sh struck at the end of session, uh, when it was, came to veto session and we were told one thing that we would just uh, gavel in and gavel out and there was no need to come and, and actually it was gavel in, signy die and gavel out and, and a few other uh, mishaps where our Republican leadership has, has basically not told. There was something I thought was interesting. You and Senator Igel were, were having an inquiry, and you both said that you did not want the choppy waters. You wanted calm waters. Do you think, and in, in right now, after caucus, after some of the things today, is, it, is there really a path for the Republican caucus to find those calm waters? I believe that there is a path, and that's what, that's what we want. That's what I want. That's what I believe many of my Senate colleagues want, whether they're identified as part of the conservative caucus or they're just conservative centers or some of the more moderate centers. And, and so my hope is that we can have uh, some consensus, uh, work with our colleagues across the aisle, um, you know, Senator Roberts, Senator Washington, and, and come to consensus. But you know, right now, with that level of trust broken, it's very hard uh, to see that going. You know, Senators, it's almost unfair to think of your previous colleagues. They had to filibuster forever. Most of the Democrats get to sit in their office and watch the Republicans filibuster each other. It's almost like cheating. Uh, except for Senator Roberts. He actually yes. finds filibustering to be a art. Um, <laughs> he, and he's he, good he, at it. He likes it. Um, but I do think, um, echoing what Senator Hoskins has said, we do need to find more um, friendship and relationships amongst each other. Um, we will continue to filibuster, but um, it shouldn't be just on one section or faction of any party. Are you offering to mediate the relationships on the Republican caucus side? Uh, I'm not a certified mediator. <laughs> what you are, though, now is a certified author, right? I Tell am. Tell folks about this is awesome. What, what is this book and how this come together? So You Can Too is a book uh, of the history of the 36 women who have been blessed to serve the Missouri Senate in our 200 years as a state. So last year, um, the 11 women of the, st of the Senate, which history making, 
the most time we've had this many women. We were invited to a uh, dinner by one of the commissioners, um, Sarah, uh, Sarah, no, Sarah Pauly, the director of conservation. So um, during that time, we got to know each other, we got to know her, and we were trying to come up with something that we could do collectively that would be bipartisan and for an issue that we could all agree on. And we all agree on literacy. And so we came up with the idea to do the book. Each senator that has been a senator for the state, each woman has her own page in there. We have a history of who she is. If she's still alive, we have a quote from her, uh, maybe some pictures when the, she was young. And we will take this book to all um, of the 34 Senate districts and read the book and give the book out to some schools. Senator Steve Roberts, we're about to talk about congressional maps. I have, uh, it's an interesting thing. It's almost a roar of people saying, I want to do this, that, I, I'd I want to be part of a congressional run. Your ears have to be burning when you go back to St. Louis. Oh, very much so. It's an interesting time. As you know, it's something that the legislature does every 10 years. So this will be my first experience kind of going through this process. Glad to say this time around, we're not going to be losing a congressional seat. So hopefully that makes it go a little smoother this year. So I see in the legislative leadership comes out with a map, essentially a 6-2 map. And then I saw Senator Idle's Facebook page. Make the case for a 7-1 map that I've seen you've signed on to. Well, I, I think when you look at other states, obviously the end all game is control of the House of Representatives. And so when we look at, at what other states have done, whether it's Maryland, which has a, a 7-D, 1-R map, and, and I've been told that that 1-R seat is very competitive uh, with the Democrat, or we look at what Illinois did and... I mean, that was just ridiculous. Well, Democrats yes. don't even defend that, right? They, yeah, they passed a map and it is very gerrymandered. They dissolved two Republican uh, congressional seats. And so then we, we look at Missouri. And so right now, yes, we do have a 6-2 map. Uh, I would argue that the map that was proposed by uh, Senate Republican leadership was a 5-2-1 map uh, with uh, that, uh, con I believe, the second congressional district uh, being uh, able to flip to blue within the next 10 years. And so, yes, when we look at what other states are, we look at, at uh, what the proposed maps are, we look at the end game of, of who has, would have the most uh, U.S. House of Representatives, uh, Republicans and Democrats, obviously, yes, I would push for a more Republican map. Now, the, the map, the, the district they're all targeting, and so that you see these Republicans sharpening their knives at dinner time, is your congressional district, the 5th. You could draw a 7-1 map in 2022, probably, and elect Republicans, but you'd have to carve Jackson County three ways, right? I believe we would have to carve Jackson County three ways, and we would cost the state of Missouri millions of dollars in legal fees, as that map would be extremely gerrymandered to um, turn Jack, uh, the 5th District even competitive at this point, much less Republican. Um, as I looked this week, for the last 16 years uh, for that district, the lowest Democrat vote was 58 percent, I believe, and that included having three primarily rural districts included in uh, three primarily rural counties included in that district. And so if we looked at compactness, um, culture of the folks that are in a, com uh, a, co a congressional district, I think that the fifth district has already proven that in the last 10 years, uh, it is a Democrat district. We have, um, are the only metropolitan district in the United States of America that, has, that stretches 90 miles. And while that's not a lot for um, some of our more rural drawn districts, it is a lot for a city, the largest city in the state of Missouri and one of the largest cities in America. There is no other congressman that comes from a metropolitan area that represents 90 miles of folks. That, that has urban, suburban, and rural community. And I believe that the district that it is drawn now with a city that has gone up uh, in percentage, um, a community that has gone up, uh, is reflective of what uh, the fifth district should be. I definitely understand uh, the want and need, the want to have 7-1, but what we should be looking at first is not what uh, the numbers should be, and that's U.S. Congress, but we should be looking at what best serves our Missouri citizens and what they have said. Well, our Missouri a gerrymandering city, both ways, right? There now. is no, if you look at this map, it is Jackson County. I don't think you can get cleaner than being Jackson County and a small part of 
Clay County, which is still in the city of Kansas City. Mike Deering, you'll probably be asked to I don't want any part of it. <laughs> you'll be asked to probably MC the rallies for some of these congressional races after your performance last election. It, it looks to me like it's this. So currently, you, could, you would have to gerrymander essentially Jackson County. There are other counties could probably stay whole. But you'd have a situation where Republicans could most likely elect seven Republicans this time. 2022, probably going to be a good year for Republicans. But I remember 06 and 08. In a 7-1 map, eh, maybe a couple of districts are shaky. You could probably draw a 6-2 map that, that's almost bulletproof. It's kind of what, pick your poison, right? You know, the way I kind of look at it personally is I think Shaw and Burnsketter did a great job. I think it's balanced. I think it's hard to argue with it. And I think they should be commended. Um, I think I did not know what to expect. And I think it's fair. I think it makes sense. I think it's... Who cares if it's seven, one, six? I don't care. Let's do what's best for the citizens of the state. Steve Roberts, you've served in the House. To me, you think about this. Now that the Republicans need an emergency clause to make this happen, last time you had to override the governor's veto, you had two Democrats, one from Congressman Clay's congressional district, one from Congressman Cleaver's, came and voted for the bill to override the governor's veto. In this situation, could you get a, Repo a Democrat House member to vote for an emergency clause on a 7-1 map? I don't think so, not in the 7 1 map. Because before, the, the congressmen were happy with their districts. I mean, they had, they had agreed on those districts, therefore, right. they, they helped provide a vote or encourage someone to vote. This time, if you're taking one away, I, what would a Democrat have the gain by doing that? I think that may be a, an issue that, that people talk about is not a problem, but I, Dean Plock's going to have a hard time getting a Democrat to vote for that. Right, I think, especially with those recent resignations, they're going to need Democrat support to, to get it across with the finish line with the emergency. You sit in those House leadership meetings. If you're sitting around that table, what would you tell Dean Blogger to do to go get a Democrat to vote for a map that is 7-1? I, I would tell, you know, Plocker, obviously, I would tell him to see if he could strike a deal and see if he could strike a deal. Obviously, there's there's lots of different bills. There's lots of, there's a supplemental budget out there. There's lots of different things that, that people want and are important to their district. And, you know, whether it's uh, striking deals with Republicans, whether it's striking deals with Democrats, you know, many times it's the art of compromise and seeing if he couldn't come to a compromise. You know, with if we take out uh, CD1 as far as the state of Missouri, Trump actually won uh, the state of Missouri by 25 points. 25 percent. So if you take out CD1 over in St. Louis and, and just have the rest of the state, Trump actually won by 25 uh, percentage points. And, and so, you know, I, I think uh, generally the state does go red. You know, I, I value and respect my, my Democrat Senate colleagues and, and both of them are, are good friends of mine. Uh, we just have a difference of opinion on this. Let's talk about masks. I remember last time you took some floor time discussing this issue. Uh, St. Louis County, I, I thought the, the final product was a pretty reasonable law. Uh, and, you know, we were in a situation of a crisis. Usually a crisis makes very extreme, usually bad law. The compromise you guys came up with was, okay, an executive can make an order, can last for a month, but you know, you gotta get the support of your legislative body. That to me made sense. In St. Louis City, Tashara Jones, the mayor, has had no problem with hers. And that's something just Quentin Lucas probably could do whatever with his city council's agreement. In St. Louis County, a, a different, you know, different area, they did never could get a majority, now they got one. I think that's kind of the, the law working, right? It is, except for we have non-legislators um, who also have an impact on the law and that has now affected our entire state and has our public health entities and some of our um, school districts afraid to enforce any mask even when they, their own communities may or may not be seeing spikes. Um, I know where I live in the city, we have a lot of hospitals. Um, and I would love to see more hospitals in rural areas. I don't think it's, I think it's common knowledge that my family lives in rural, in rural Missouri. Um, I would like for my grandmother's youngest cousin in Blackburn to have a closer place to go, to not have to wait an hour or more for an ambulance. I'd like for Sherry Maxwell in the Boot Hill to not be subject to death if she has to make a call. I say that to say, um, if we don't try to figure out what works, um, and if masks are the things that may work, and those communities should be allowed to follow the law that we, we passed, they should not be afraid that they're going to lose school funding if they enforce a mass uh, mandate. Or public health directors, um, and these are not people in Jackson County, or Clay County, or Platte County, where I'm from, or St. Louis County, or St. Louis, or even Johnson County, uh, or Senator Oxen. These are rural communities that are now afraid to enforce any mask 
because of things that are outside what we did in this building. Do you believe that a school has the legal authority to force five-year-old little kids to wear a mask all day? I do not believe that they have that legal authority. What do you think, Mike? I mean, you, you're a rural Missouri guy. I think the argument Judge Green made was, you, where do you have this authority? And I think he said he didn't find it, right? Yeah, I, I personally don't believe they have the authority to do that. Steve Roberts, uh, in St. Louis, my assumption is a mask order is probably a relatively positive thing, a very popular thing. But people have dogged the Attorney General a little bit as he's running for Senate. The, why is what he's doing is overwhelmingly popular with a large segment of this state. I, I do think what you're going to see is a realignment a little bit of these health departments and these rules. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the most important thing is that we allow our local governments to have the greatest amount of authority. So I don't, you know, see the need for him to do this broad overreach. I mean, it's great at grabbing headlines and attention, but I don't think it's the right thing for Missourians. Or Give me a prediction. Citizens. You're going to pass. Will, will another health law pass this time? It's hard to say. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. What do you think? Give me a prediction. Will another law? It all depends on who's arguing the bill. <laughs> what do you think? Yes, I, I would think we'll, we'll have some changes. What do you think? I didn't hear the question, but. <laughs> if, if the court comes back and says schools do have this, do you think the legislature takes it away from this year? Yes. I, think, I tend to think if, yeah. the, courts, if the courts overrule Judge Green, uh, that bill will be hard to stop. Yeah. With a minute left, who won the week? I'd say Senator Washington and the other women of the Missouri Senate on so cool. passing their yes. new book, uh, You Can Too. Stole mine. He stole <laughs> mine! <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to copy him straight out. This is outstanding, and I'll be buying one for Millie. Who I will say who won the week are the women who led us to this, and that yeah. is Senator Jeannie Riddle and Senator Jill Shute, um, who are also the women who have brought us together and helped us uh, end a special session very quickly and save our hospitals. Where so, can you get this book at, by the way? Uh, right now, I think you should ask Jeannie, uh, Senator Riddle. <laughs> It'll be on the website where you get the book. I, I can't argue. I, I think the women senators, both past and present, definitely won the week this week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Burns, Sketter, and Shaw. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, obviously there was some Senate opposition, but normally these maps have tons of opposition. This case is going to be interesting to see how many people will sign on to your call I am seeing some Republicans at the grassroots level pick this up. It's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Yep. And you can follow where that goes next week joining us on This Week in Missouri Politics. Missouri Politics, sponsored by the Missouri Association of Career Fire Protection Districts, Spire, and Sterling Bank. Guys, thank you so much for watching the show. I want to tell you about a new thing we're offering. It's the Missouri Times Podcast Network. You'll get this show every week. If you want to listen to it in your car, you don't have time to watch it. You'll get our show in Missouri podcast, History of Missouri, one county at a time. You'll also get our midweek update. Once a week, I throw up the uh, Facebook Live. I, 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 we talk politics, usually it'll lunch and discuss politics. You'll get to hear all those things come right to your phone. Subscribe to us on iTunes or Android. Missouri Times Podcast Network. Please join us and subscribe.